RealCatholicTV.com has changed its name. We are now ChurchMilitant.tv. New name on the dog tags, same battle plan for the salvation of souls. ChurchMilitant.tv. Join us in combat. Become a premium member today. Hello everyone and welcome to the Vortex where lies and falsehoods are trapped and exposed. I'm Michael Voris coming to you from St. Peter's Square at the Vatican. Wake up Catholics, wake up. Do you not see what is happening around the world? Pay attention to these prophetic words. Quote, the world in which we live is the battleground of the church. I believe that we are now living at the end of Christendom. It is the end of Christendom, but not of Christianity. What is Christendom? Christendom is the political, economic, moral, social, legal life of a nation as inspired by the gospel ethic. That is finished. Abortion, the breakdown of the family life, dishonesty, even the natural virtues upon which the supernatural virtues were based are being discredited. Christianity is not at the end, but we are at the end of Christendom. And I believe the sooner we face up to this fact, the sooner we will be able to solve many of our problems. 30 or 40 years ago, it was very easy to be a Christian. The very air we breathed was Christian. Bicycles could be left on the front lawns. Doors could be left unlocked. Suddenly, all this has changed. Now we have to affirm our faith. We live in a world that challenges us, and many fall away. Dead bodies float downstream. It takes live bodies to resist the current. And this is our summons. We will have to begin a different church. We are, for a moment, on a trapeze. We are in between the death of an old civilization and culture and the swing to the beginning of the new. These are the times in which we live. They are, therefore, wonderful days, marvelous. We should thank God that we live in times like this. Venerable Archbishop Fulton Sheen first uttered those words in 1974, and 38 years later, they contain in them a greater urgency than even that giant among bishops may have ever thought possible. The new church that Sheen speaks of that we need to begin is only new in the sense that the thoroughly Protestantized Catholic church that has been around for the past 50 years or so is the old church. What needs to be resurrected is a ferocity about the faith, an unapologetic apologetics, a refusal and rejection of all that is not solidly Catholic in every corner of the Catholic world. This includes cowardly approaches to the faith by those charged with transmitting and defending it. If your parish is slowly sapping your faith and the faith of your children, leave it and get to one that actually nourishes you and your family. It is a spiritual felony for leaders to slowly starve their people of the full and authentic truths of Christ made present in the magisterium of the church. And it therefore makes accomplices of all inside the church who continue to peddle this soft, glad-handing, girly approach to the faith, being afraid to call out leaders who betray the faithful by word or deed, active or passive. Too many in the church, vast numbers, feed off a bureaucracy that is corrupt or morally complicit in the downfall of souls. Those who know will not speak out for fear of their own loss of income or standing or prestige. And as the moral and spiritual rot continues to creep along, they continue broadcasting or writing books or blogs, supporting the very bureaucracy that's sucking the life out of the church. They aim their barbs and criticisms at enemies of the faith outside the walls, which takes not the least bit of courage, but refuse to talk about what they know going on inside the walls. The refusal, for example, to allow the Latin mass to expand. The continued allowance of um, employment of heretics in universities, of pastors being allowed to stay pastors as they preach a false gospel of silence on the most pressing issues of the day. All of this and much more, they know and refuse to breathe a word about any of it. They refuse to sound a call to arms and hide behind lofty sounding terms like prudence and charity and unity. To do so would cost them their speaking engagements and the acclaim of ignorant sheep and ability to host radio shows and author books. They will not tell the whole truth and therefore they are accomplices in the degradation of the church. They are not so much allies as they are parasites. Archbishop Fulton Sheen again is instructive here, quote, a Catholic who does not strive to spread his faith is a parasite on the life of the church. How can someone claim to be spreading the faith 
particularly those with a platform to do so, when they refuse to confront the very forces inside the church preventing the spread of the faith. Weak and cowardly bishops, modernist staffers and chanceries and high-level offices pushing perverse notions of the church's teaching in the areas of social doctrine and sexual morality. The Church of Nice crowd never wants to talk about these people, the wolves in sheep's clothing, the ravenous wolves. Meanwhile, because the wolves are allowed to roam free, the church continues to be weak and the world grows more evil as a consequence. Indeed, the only avenue left for a corpse is to go along with the flow. The authentic church must become a church of ferocious resistance and great saints unafraid to say all that needs to be said. How long do the parasites think the host will be alive to feed from? God love you. I'm Michael Voris. RealCatholicTV.com has changed its name. We're now ChurchMilitant.tv. New name on the dog tags, same battle plan for the salvation of souls. ChurchMilitant.tv. Join us in combat, like us on Facebook.